Hello, welcome to the POP online training module on computing the POP metrics with Scopy, Scalask, and Cube. My name is Bernd Moore from the Uli Supercomputing Center. In this module, I will tell you how to compute the POP metrics for HPC application codes using the POP tools Scopy, Scalaska, and Cube. That means how to make measurements with Scopy and Scalaska in order to uh, be able to compute the POP metrics out of it. And once you have a measurements, how to compute and view pop metrics with cube. If you want to follow along, uh, this is the usual things you need for our online training modules. Uh, access to HPC cluster or Linux workstation or laptop where you have development software installed, like the compilers, MPI library, and so on. You must have access to the source code of the application you want to analyze, and you need the pop tools, Scopy, Scalaska, and Kube installed. Uh, before you can use them, make sure you have the bin subdirectories of the tool installation prefixes in the environment where you have. And I assume that you are somehow familiar uh, with the tools, Scopy, Scalaska, and Kube, and how to use them. For this specific module, we require the latest version of the tools, which means Scalaska version 2.6 and Cube uh, 4.6, uh, which include the latest enhancements to be able to simplify me uh, measurements of the pop metrics using these tools. Just as a reminder, basically, what is the basic workflow on using Scopy, Scalaska, and Cube? We start by instrumenting the source code files. This is done by prefixing the scorp instrumenter command before an, um, every compiler and linker command, which produces an instrumented uh, application, which includes the scorp measurement library and the Papi library uh, for hardware counter measurements. Uh, when you execute that, um, and uh, we you use here the prefix scan in front of a parallel launch command, so in front of MPI exec or MPI run. Um, this generates uh, a summary profile, which you normally use to investigate whether there's too much overhead, whether filtering is needed, and other things. And once that is done, we can do an uh, improved uh, set up and, and do a trace measurement, which is done by running scan-q-t in front of the launch command, which produces then uh, trace files, which automatically get analyzed by the Scalaska trace analysis, which again uh, creates an uh, enhanced uh, profile. These profiles can be looked at it and processed with cube tools and the cube browser. And this is typically um, easily done by using the square command in front of a measurement directory. For the pop metrics, uh, I also can't uh, go into details here. Uh, please go to that website to learn further about the pop metrics. Um, there's basically uh, three sorts of it. So in the original POP project from 2015 to 18, we created a first set of metrics, um, which were suitable mainly for MPI programs. And in the latest phase of a POP project in the last three years, we extended them to also cover hybrid programs like MPI plus OpenMP. Um, and there's two versions. Uh, there's an additive uh, version and a multiplicative version. Uh, in order to learn more about it, uh, I, uh, as I said, please go to the website. Um, the, the article here is a good uh, uh, introduction text uh, to explain everything. If you're more a, a visual type, uh, I suggest to uh, listen to that webinar, which we recorded, uh, which explain the, uh, these new metrics. OK, so in order to, to do a measurement with Scopy and Scalaska, uh, the pop metrics, uh, we, of course, have to do the usual uh, instrumentation and setup of a measurement uh, first, as in, in uh, every measurement, you know, like you, you instrument by using Scopy in front of a compile and link commands. You do a first uh, uh, profile experiment to uh, determine overhead and, and filtering and so on. But once that is done, you can do then the pop measurements. Uh, 
In this case, you have to do actually, again, two measurements. The first one is for the for computing the parallel efficiency. Uh, for this, we need uh, a trace measurement and analysis. And for computing the computational scaling, we have to do a uh, profile measurement with suitable hardware counters. In order to simplify that, we introduced uh, the so-called presets. Uh, so a scan has now a new option dash P for preset. And by giving it the uh, value pop, uh, scan knows exactly what two measurements uh, to do in what order with what hardware counters and so you don't have to remember. So once you do that, you basically get this profile and trace measurement. Uh, after that, we have to merge them together in a single file, uh, post-process them, and after that, we can analyze the, the file with the cube advisor. Uh, again, these last three steps are uh, simplified by using square in front of, in front of a measurement archive, and then uh, it recognizes as a special pop uh, measurement and, and does the three steps automatically. Normally, uh, these uh, analysis of pop metrics is done um, with various uh, different uh, uh, number of ranks or uh, uh, number of threads and so you have to repeat basically the last steps for a different uh, number of uh, like ranks and threads. Okay, let's give me a quick demo how that looks like. Uh, I, again, I'm using a simple uh, Jacobi solver on my laptop to show you, and it's exactly the same example which I, which I used in the online training module using pop tools, copy and Scalaska. Okay, here to basically uh, uh, simplify the, the demo, I already did the, the usual beginner steps. So I, I set the environment variable path to include the, the tool directories. I instrumented the example application by passing scorp uh, to the make file in a way that it gets prepended uh, before every compile and link command. And then I did uh, a first measurement uh, running it based a profile, looked at it, uh, scored it, and, and see whether uh, overhead is needed. In, in that case, it's not uh, uh, needed. So we can directly go ahead and, and redo the, the measurement. Just this time, we pass the preset pop to it. As you says, so basically, it has first, it does the, the trace measurement. It's shown here. Uh, now uh, it did the, the trace analysis, and here it does the second run uh, with a profiling with puppy counters. And so you see, this is greatly simplified. It reruns all the necessary things, and all the data is stored here. So we just uh, post process it. Uh, basically with a square command, and it recognizes automatically it's a, a combined uh, pop preset measurement. So it merges the, the trace and the profile, post processes it, everything, and, and stores it. So as you see, it's, it's not too complicated. Okay, uh, in order to show you how the Cube Advisor works and looks, um, I'm using a more interesting example like the last time, uh, which uh, uh, in the POP online training on using POP tools Cube, I'm using a measurement on the Tea Leaf mini app. Um, and uh, so it basically, uh, yeah, you can compare that to that. Okay, this is how it looks like when you start up Cube. Uh, on this measurement. Uh, so first we want to uh, bring up the cube advisor. You do that by going on the right side on these tabs, clicking on general, and you see the, the pop adv cube advisor with a pop assessment showing up. The next thing you want to do is going here to the top left, where you can select the different uh, versions of a pop metrics because the, the tlib uh, application is a hybrid mpi open and p program i select here the hybrid assessment the additive version here as an example and then you see the advisor is calculating uh, the metrics uh, for the whole application so overall the parallel efficiency is 0 0.63 which is not bad but also not uh, too too good um, it uh, 
basically has two components, uh, either the process, the MPI efficiency, and the thread OpenMP efficiency. As you see, the thread efficiencies are, are very good and, and very high, uh, but the process efficiency is uh, smaller, so this indicates that there's an issue uh, on the MPI side. And if you look at the sub-metrics of uh, process efficiency, you see it's basically a load uh, balance problem. You can also look at the metrics uh, for specific portions uh, of the application. We can do that basically as usual, uh, looking basically where is most of the time spent in the application. This time, actually, you see it's it's very clearly uh, here on this tea leaf uh, calculation in the beginning, um, and there's uh, multiple uh, uh, subparts to it. So basically, we can select here that tea leaf application, click recalculate, and then uh, we get uh, the pop metrics for the main part of a uh, of an application of an interesting uh, portion of the application we're interested in. In this case, because most of the time is spent in that, it's it's not much that different uh, than for the whole program. So that was it. So it's actually quite simple um, to do that. Okay, uh, if you run into any issues, uh, either the measurement of uh, Scorpi, you can contact the support by support at scorpi.org. If you have issues with uh, Scalaska, the scan cube commands and so on, and in cube, you can contact uh, scalaska.fzudich.de. Okay, that was it. Thank you for listening in and having fun uh, using the, our tools to do pop measurements. Thank you. <laughs>